Sunset of awnings, the good, the bad, and the ugly. How to install it, and what you need to know, and what the book don't tell you. Let me guess. You're thinking about putting a sunsetter awning or another type of awning on your house and you're YouTube searching it to find out if you can do it or whether you got to hire it out. Here's the simple answer. You can do it. If you're looking for a sunsetter awning installation uh, video or any kind of awning installation video on vinyl siding, this video should help you out. I want to make sure that by the time you watch the end of this video, you're ready to jump out of your seat run outside and start putting this thing up So, he's got it out of the box already. It's sitting right there. It's very long. See that? How long that sucker is. And it's going right up there, over that vent. It says to measure up nine feet and then down nine inches. That's going to put us right in line with that vent. So we got to come up here. So, four inches shy of 11 feet, 130 inches. So if you're having trouble getting the siding off, go to where there's a seam, take it off from the seam. And then you can pull it up. That will let us get under here so we can find the studs. We can drill through this board until we hit studs. Katana, go get the Franklin sensor. So I wanna see if that'll detect studs through the styrofoam board that's on here for the insulation. This stud finder is called the Franklin sensor. It actually has like 12 individual sensors in it and it don't need to be calibrated before using it. That just means it works right away. Where with other stud finders, you have to activate it after you put it on the wall. And with this one, you don't have to do that. You saw those three red lights. Well, they represent one and a half inches and that's usually a clear sign that there's a stud there. But that's not in our case. This Franklin sensor lied to us. So if you see what I'm doing here, I drilled a few holes looking for that stud in that area and I was unable to find it. Well, you can keep going along the wall like that and you can do it until you find a stud. Most times when you're dealing with vinyl siding, the nails are not going to be strategically placed into every stud. This house is an anomaly. You're not going to find that. I, I promise you, you're probably not going to find that out there in the wild. As you locate the studs, just put a small pencil mark right on the siding. You're not going to hurt nothing by doing that. You're going to end up covering with the bracket anyway. I'm going to show you the easiest way to install an awning bracket ever. All right, so after you get everything marked off, you can put the vinyl siding back on. This little vinyl siding removal tool actually works very well if you ever have to deal with vinyl siding or if you're in the trades and or thinking about getting into the trades. These things are cheap. You should buy one. It's just a little hook. Uh, stainless steel so it doesn't uh, bend easy it's really really firm and it helps you pull the bottom tab of the siding down so you can snap it back into place I'm just gonna run right across the roof here put the vinyl siding back on and I'm gonna show you how to hang these there brackets okay so purchase one of these mountain blocks for each bracket 
plus an additional one for the electrical box and an extra one just in case you crack one. In my case, I have six brackets, so I got eight of these mounting blocks. Now these vinyl siding mounting blocks, they come in various shapes and designs, and you'll need to know the type of siding you have. You might have double four, double eight, double four Dutch lap, and there's a host of others. So check with your siding companies or people that sell it nearby you, the supply houses, and, and take a picture maybe, and they can probably tell you. Now what I did was I aligned the metal bracket onto the mounting block, and I was ensuring that both the holes in the bracket were not near either edge of the mounting block, and I pre-drilled the mounting block with a one-eighth of an inch drill bit. Now before you run off thinking, hey, I got the solution to mount my awning, I'm out of here, well, hold on, slow down. Watch the rest of this because it's full of useful information. And you won't have to learn it, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Now to start with, you should use that first mounting block that you drilled the holes in as a pattern and drill the rest of the blocks by aligning the holes so that they're all 100% exact with each other. And you're gonna do that using that same one-eighth of an inch drill bit. Then when they're all done, after you got all of them drilled, not the extra two, the one for the electric and the one in case you crack it, once you have them all done, what you want to do is you want to enlarge those holes to whatever size your lag bolts are. In my case, my lag bolts are 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, so I use a 3 eighths inch drill bit and I enlarge the holes. I'm sure you can see this but there's a little pencil line at the top and I'm just lining the holes up with that pencil line so I'm in the dead center of the stud. I'm also making sure, I keep looking to the right, to make sure that I'm drilling this at the right height. The last thing I need to do is put two holes in someone's siding and be at the wrong height and not clear that vent that's down the other end. Factor in the 
One may assume because this awning is 20 feet long that the weight distribution is evenly distributed and that lifting it really isn't all that difficult. That is wrong. <laughs> this awning is extremely heavy. And honestly, you should have at least three strong people trying to lift it. Now, Chris is the homeowner, and he offered to help lift it when he scheduled the install a month ago. And to be completely honest, Katana and I would never have been able to position this awning on the brackets without his help. As an added level of security, we have both Katana and Chris's wife in the second floor bedrooms. They're holding on to straps. They're going to help guide it and take whatever load off of us that they possibly can. I don't know. <laughs> It might help to put a foot ahead of where you where you're gonna go so they like put one foot higher than the other so you can lift off that foot. Yeah, I think I'm at my spot right now. I'm, I'm worried about being able to go up while I'm holding this. I don't know if I'll then, be able to Then do drop that. your left foot down one. Do you think that would help you? Yeah. Can you put that on your shoulder or no? Probably, yep. Just keep the slack out of it. Yep, keep the slack out. You ready, Chris? Hang on, I'm, I don't think I'm... No? Sit it down? Sorry, yeah, down. That's all right. I need to position it because my shoulder's not taking the weight my, my one arm We need is. a taller ladder in place of that blue one. Um, what was that? Why do I got TikTok over here? <laughs> Stupid as that. Do, you, do we, I can put a bigger, we can put a bigger ladder over No, there. I think if I can, if I can get it up, all about the position. You want to put it over you? What I think I got to get it. Was, it was, you got it. My shoulder wasn't holding it. It was my arm. That's why I was. Yeah, but don't you want to put it on your other shoulder? Yeah. yeah I do. Yeah, if you put it on that shoulder and then shift, we should. that should work better. Towards you a hair. Okay. Oh. You alright? Yeah, so far. It just feels like it's rolling forward. I'm going roof. Yep. Can the girls pull a little bit more? Pull girls. Yeah, there you can. go. We all can right. pull more. Okay. Right hang on, hang on. When you're ready. Where's it going to go? It's going to go in this one. Go to him. Go to him. There you go. I'm in. I'm in. You're in. Everyone's in. All right. Hold. I'm not holding anything. That ain't coming out. Can I let go? Um. Or should I hold on for? No, that I, ain't going anywhere on that side. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I could probably, I'm just holding it just to be absolutely safe. But oh, I yeah. Probably let go of it now, too. Just, yeah, I'm sure. Um, you want me to hit the middle? No, I think we need to go, we need to slide it before we get to. You want to slide it a little bit? Yeah. Right, hold on, let me get up there. That's what I was saying. All right, that's fine. Keep your side in, all right? There's nothing blocking yours, right? You no. Don't, you oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to take my end yeah. out. Okay. Slide it towards me. Okay. One more. more. Uh, Can you go more? It's hanging up. What's it hanging up on? It might be. Well, take your side out yeah. then. Girls, pull. You're right. back in. I'm sorry, Dad. In? In? Nope. 
There we go. Now where you want to slide it. A few more inches if we can. I don't know if it'll go. I don't think it wants to slide. I think it's taking it You're out. You're going to have to pull it out and move it over again. <laughs> ready? All right, ready. Okay. That's it. Whew. That's the one. That's it? Yep. Got it tight, Tom? I got it. Let me get a bolt in it. <laughs> okay, yeah, and you're good. Alright. Yep. For 25 minutes, I tried to get this second bolt through the bracket without any luck. I even had the homeowner up on the ladder pushing on the awning. You know, applying that light pressure that the sunset of manual stage you may need. What a joke. Here's a skinny on it. It don't work. But don't run off yet. I found a simple solution. So if you run into the same problem with your awning installation, have no fear. The solution is super, super simple. And it's coming up right after this. All right, here's the solution. Use a pair of channel locks. Grab the little nub that's in the very back and grab the front of the square bar and just squeeze. You'll have just enough leverage. It'll pull the bar back and the bolt will slide right into place. Super easy. And now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Ow. Okay, first time operation, plug it in. So it says, Katana, it says when it's open, it's gonna open a little bit, it's gonna completely close, and then it's gonna open again. He's got the remote here, so he's probably gonna be able to close. I already plugged it in. There you go. That's it, guys. had to do this off camera because it was just too much to try to do dodging this raindrop so we had to keep stopping because it started pouring but we ran electric up behind it can you see it maybe from here we ran electric up above it in an exterior box so it's hardwire powered and you don't see any lines coming down no power cords or anything just looks like a finished job. All right. Customer's going to give us an A review for this. Very happy with it. It's a $4,000 unit.